travel a lot and I always miss my family. So there's nothing like coming home, cooking up dinner, and getting reconnected. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook. Simple is best. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. You can do it too. You can do it too. I've been away from my family for over a week. Way too long. I'm looking forward to spending some time tonight reconnecting with Rachel. A nice, quiet, how you doing dinner. It's also a time to reconnect with my kitchen. I love coming in here and just getting inspiration from the ingredients I have. I don't need a recipe to cook dinner for Rachel and me. I'm just gonna let my heart be my guide on this. Follow my ingredients. I'm sure it'll taste awesome. Let's see what's on the menu tonight. Actually, I haven't been in this fridge for a while. What do we, hey, we'll put those there. Duck breasts, cool. Rachel must have pulled these out of the freezer. I guess that means she wants duck for dinner tonight. Well, I'm only too happy to oblige because after all around here, I'm just the cook. This will be good though, I haven't cooked duck in a while. I love duck. It has a rich meaty flavor to it and it tastes wonderful. You know what though? I think I will add a little more flavor to it. I'm gonna marinate this with something. Let's see what I have. Now duck is actually pretty tender, so I won't need to marinate it to tenderize it. I'm just gonna to need to add some flavor to it. And you know, when I'm starting out to think about a marinade, I usually think about my herbs first. Something that would go nicely with duck. Something strong, because it's got a strong flavor. Thyme, thyme will work, some nice dry thyme. That'll stand up to the duck flavor. And what else? Something salty. Soy sauce. Where's my soy sauce? There we go. Duck's rich flavor needs salt, no doubt about it. Soy sauce will work. And what else? Uh, mustard. I know. I got some good grainy mustard here somewhere. Perfect. Now to get all this flavor locked into that duck, I use a simple freezer bag. No mess. That's the beautiful thing about this. Ever since I started cooking at home, I've learned to keep my mess to a minimum. It's not like the old days when I had 14 dishwashers at my beck and call. So, I'll just simply dump in a little bit of dry thyme, actually quite a bit of dry thyme. There we go. Now, I find that when you're seasoning, we tend to err on the conservative side. In other words, add more flavor. Don't be so tentative, just go for it. A little bit of soy sauce. Now, not too much soy sauce. At this point, I'm basically seasoning the meat. Just a teaspoon or so, not very much. And mustard. Now, I prefer grainy mustard in this case because it has more flavor. Now, with the freezer bag, it's very simple. Just sort of push this all around, mush it up. The duck breast is flavored immediately. I don't have to marinate this overnight to get all these flavors into it. I could start cooking this right away. Although I do have some time, so I think I'll let this rest for a while. I'll come back to it later and it'll be nice and flavorful. Time for a quick sandwich. There it is. This calls for a croque monsieur. I remember back to my first day on the job as an apprentice cook in London years ago. I was washing dishes all day. I really wasn't enjoying myself. And the other cooks had told me, we're gonna break for lunch soon. We're gonna have croque monsieur for lunch today. And then of course, when lunch rolled around, I realized what a croque monsieur really was, a grilled cheese sandwich. Now I don't take anything for granted in my kitchen, including grilled cheese sandwiches. And the key is butter and lots of it. I'm gonna actually start with a little oil though. If I use straight butter in this preheated pan, the butter would scorch and burn and I don't want those flavors in my sandwich. So by using just the slightest bit of oil, 
I encourage the butter to melt, to do its job and help cook, but the oil lets it out a bit and it just won't burn as quickly. There we go, look at that beautiful golden brown color. We're talking flavor now. That'll take just a minute. Now, my duck breast is marinating. I still have to come up with some vegetables, maybe a salad to go with it for dinner tonight. But I'm not even 100% sure what I have in my own refrigerator. I've been on the road all week. I've been away from my kitchen. I've been away from real food. When I get home, the first thing I want to do is cook something simple, like a grilled cheese sandwich with ham. Simple is best. Now, I promised Rachel I'd cook dinner when I got home. Tonight is special. It's a chance to reconnect. Rachel left a few duck breasts out of the freezer for me, and when I saw them, I decided to make a marinade. Not to tenderize them, they're already tender, but to spice things up a bit tonight. I chose thyme for its herbaceous aroma, soy sauce for a touch of salt, and grain mustard for a sharp accent flavor. Now I've got time to make a salad. We always like to keep quite a few different lettuces around. You can buy so many different types in the stores these days. I've got some romaine, some radicchio. Oh yeah, some bib lettuce. Now that lettuce is looking just a little bit wilted, and I think I'm gonna need to rehydrate it, and here's how I'll do it. Very simple, and it doesn't start with cold water. I begin with room temperature water. Just take your lettuce, submerge it right into that room temperature water. You'll know when it's done at this point because you'll be able to feel it. It soaks the water up so quickly, you'll literally be able to feel it with your fingers. I think I'll make a goat's cheese vinaigrette. Some flavors to go with goat's cheese. Something nice. Actually, goat's cheese goes very nicely with duck. It's a strong cheese. Duck has a strong, meaty flavor, so the two are going to go nicely together. But within the vinaigrette, well, when I work with goat's cheese, I always think of something sweet first. Honey, in this case. You've got to balance out that sharpness of the goat's cheese, and honey sweetness is a good way to do it. I'm also going to need a vinegar, and I think I'll just go with straight white wine vinegar this time. A neutral vinegar. I don't want to add any flavors with the vinegar. I've already got the strong dominant flavor of the goat's cheese. I've got my olive oil. I won't need a mustard this time. Oh, this is going to be easy. All my vinaigrettes follow a very simple ratio. I start with one part vinegar. And to that one part, I add three parts of everything else. In this case, olive oil, and the goat's cheese, of course, and a good splash of honey for sweetness, and some salt and pepper, of course. I'm loving this taste of caraway in my mouth. I've been eating this nice rye bread sandwich. And I think caraway would go nicely with goat's cheese, too. Yeah, I've got some caraway seed right here. I think I'll just grind up a little bit and sprinkle it right in. Goat's cheese flavor is so strong that it can really hold up to lots of other flavors. It'll be complemented nicely by this caraway. Very nice. Wow. Oh, it totally works. The honey balances the cheese nicely. This is going to be nice. And it's going to dress these greens beautifully. And now they're ready for the next step. So here's what I do next. Just dump off all that room temperature water. And then just a brief in and out of the ice water. And boom, all of those pores slam shut and the water that's now trapped inside the cells of the lettuce leaf causes it to crisp up nicely. And there we go, crisp and dry lettuce. It's important that it be dry because that way the vinaigrette will stick nicely to each and every one of these leaves. That's how you dress a salad.
and I'll dress that salad once I get closer to dinner. But for now, it's time to start cooking the duck. It's been marinating for about 30 minutes. It's sucked up all its flavors. And I know that duck can seem a little bit intimidating at first, but you know, your local butcher is standing by at the supermarket to answer any questions you have about specialty meat. Talk to him. I know what it's like. You got a cart full of screaming kids, the grocery store is jam packed, and the boss is coming over for dinner. There's no time to try one of those specialty meats that you always wheel right past. But hey, slow down. Thanks. Try something new. Try something with flavor, not just bland texture. Try duck. Now these days, most supermarkets carry duck. First check the freezer case. Chances are you'll find whole frozen birds. Or check if they have it fresh as well, because if they do, you'll be able to pick up just the breast or just the legs. It's just like buying chicken. Hey. Don't worry, these are not wild birds. You're not gonna find shotgun pellets in the meat. What you will find is lots of flavor, rich flavor, kind of a cross between chicken and beef. Hey, let's give chicken and beef the day off once in a while. are almost ready to cook. There's one thing I have to do though before I fire those into a saute pan. Ducks have a fairly fatty skin, so it's important while you're cooking them that you encourage the fat within the skin to render out, to come out of the skin. And here's one way of doing that. I simply take each one of these and cut into the skin just a light sort of crosshatch here, scoring if you will. And don't worry if your pattern isn't as pretty as this one, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you're opening up some channels for all the fat to flow out. And this is ready to start pan roasting. Nice and simple, but perfect for a special occasion like tonight. I've been traveling all week and just arrived home. I'm following through on a promise to make a romantic dinner for Rachel. It's a chance to reconnect a bit. I've marinated a few duck breasts with thyme, soy sauce, and grain mustard. I've also scored the skin to help them shed fat once I begin pan roasting. And I should point out that really, the fat is not in the flesh, it's in the skin. And it really is easy to get rid of with just a few simple steps. So, in it goes. Skin side down first. Now this pan has been set at a medium-high heat. Very important. At a medium heat, the fat is encouraged to come out of the skin nice and evenly. I was rooting around in the fridge earlier looking for something to go with this meal. I've got some pretty strong flavors today, so I had to be careful. What I came up with was these. These are gnocchi, Italian potato dumplings. They're neutral in flavor, so they're not gonna work against the flavors of the goat's cheese or the rich flavors of the duck or the marinade. Basically, they'll suck up whatever flavor I throw at them. And this is the key to a great meal. Great ingredients. Best of all, they're simple to make. Begin with several baked potatoes fresh from the oven. Scoop out their flesh and press through a box grater. For every two parts potato, add about one part all-purpose flour. Add a touch more flour if needed. Knead until stiff and divide and roll into long, thin logs. Cut into smaller pieces and roll on one side with a fork. Freeze until needed.
easy to cook too. As soon as they float to the surface, they're done. So I'll just keep an eye on these. Now, I've got another idea to add a bit more caraway flavor to my salad today. I'm gonna make some croutons using the rye bread. And this is something I often do. Once I introduce a theme to a dish, you can run with that theme in any number of directions. For instance, by adding the caraway to the vinaigrette, it sort of opens up the possibility of caraway throughout the salad. The salad is becoming a bit of a caraway exercise. I'm just gonna dice these up, toss them with a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, and bake them until they're nice and golden brown. These won't take very long at all. The oven's set on 350 at the moment, but you could really bake them in any oven at all. Think of it as toast, really. That's all I'm doing here. Now see how these are floating? They're good to go. They've got their own built-in timer. As soon as they float to the surface, they're done. And in a little while, I'm gonna do a little saute dish with these. Add some vegetables to them, flavor them up a bit. Just a little bit of cold water to stop that cooking. And I'll just let those stand by. Now, how's my duck breast doing? Let's see, I think it's time to flip them over. I'll know as soon as I see the bottom. Yep, that's what I'm looking for, golden brown. And when you touch it, you can feel that it's crunchy. And not only that, look at the pan. See all that fat? It wasn't there when I started. It had to come from somewhere. It came out of that skin. These are looking good. Dinner's gonna be served any moment. I've had a great time cooking up a feast for Rachel tonight. We're gonna reconnect over this meal. I've been away all week. I've got a beautiful salad all set to go with some rye croutons, some caraway goat's cheese vinaigrette, my duck breast roasted up nicely in the pan. They've been resting for a few minutes. They've reabsorbed all of their juices. And then gnocchi made it into the pan as well. I took the duck fat from the rendering process and browned the gnocchi a little bit. I also added some of that Westphalian ham that I had in my sandwich earlier. It's nice briny flavor is gonna work perfectly in this part of the dish. I think I'm gonna season it with a bit of sage as well. Sage has a wonderful aromatic earthy flavor to it that's gonna complement these flavors perfectly and the duck. go a little bit of sage and one more thing to finish this up some frozen peas perfect maybe add a splash of water that'll help steam those peas not very much I'm gonna turn my heat back up for a second too now for this salad it's time to finish it up got some sliced almonds here Nuts and fruit always go together with duck. Duck's rich flavor can work with just about anything. So I've got a couple of dried apricots standing by. I think I'll just slice these up nice and thin and toss them into the salad as well. Sprinkle those on. This is gonna be a nice salad, especially with the goat's cheese vinaigrette. Not too much. We'll just toss that as we serve ourselves. It's time to plate all this. This is the fun part. Two bowls. I remember the first time I had duck years ago. My brothers and I were out with our parents at a steakhouse, and one of my brothers dared me to order the duck. Well, of course I had to do it. I ordered it. It turned out it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I walked away that night feeling so sophisticated. That looks great. Now here's how you cut the duck breast. Now I'm going to cut this nice and thin at an angle like this. Mmm, look at that color. Unlike chicken, which you always cook through, duck should always be left a little bit pink. And now, just spread these out on the plate like so. Oh, look at that color. This is gonna taste amazing. 
Beautiful. It's a special night, so I think I'll even garnish it a little bit. There we go. Time for a taste. I don't think Rachel will notice. Ooh, oh boy, that's nice. Tender. Oh, and the mustard flavor and the soy sauce too. I never added any salt to the duck. The soy sauce did its job. It's perfectly seasoned. You know, duck is one of those ingredients that at first seems unapproachable. But don't confuse unfamiliar with undoable. Because once you get to know it, play around with it a bit, you quickly realize how easy it is to cook with. It's something special you can make for your family too. For me, it was a chance to reconnect with my kitchen and hopefully with Rachel. Did you have a good trip? It was productive. It's nice to be back, though. Yeah, we really missed you. You see you found the duck breast? As soon as I opened the fridge, there it was. <laughs> and what did you put on the duck? I marinated it in grain mustard, soy sauce, and dry thyme. It's great to have you home. Did you miss me? Yes. Or did you just miss my cooking? Well, uh, a little bit of both. Here's the home sweet home.